I mean, they were stable, but then according to Marcelino, I jumped on, on him on one chair, so it went like that. And he moved to the other chair, and I also jumped on him on the other chair, so it went to the other side. And then Warhol seems to have a way of doing like that. Wobble chairs. Wobbling chairs. <laughs> Wobble Wobble yeah. chairs. You can't let Brian sit in them, he breaks every chair. So it's... He has a reputation. So let's see where it is. What was what was your question, Erin, when you said... Um, what are the mechanisms for entry into a process that hasn't begun or that doesn't know its own beginning? And particularly the question of every, intermittently, maybe every six months or every year, there's a radical shift that happens. And there was a radical shift after the neurodiversity event. People will only know the radical shift in about a year, but many of us are feeling it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't say what it is. There was just a shift. I felt it. It happened. Mm -hmm. There was an attempt to talk about it, but it was, it's, it's ineffable. But, but these shifts alter, at some level, what is possible. Mm -hmm. And they take time, I think, to articulate themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we went into a quiet period. It, it, um, and if you enter into the sense lab in a quiet period, you have to reinvent it. Mm -hmm. And I think the reinvention um, <coughs> is always the question of how the entering happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, you know, like even at some point I, I ask, like, well, well maybe you give an artist you know, or maybe you come to something that we do. And I'm thinking, shall we put something together? So she, there's an anxiety of wanting to resolve yeah. uh, something that may happen. You still don't yeah. know how, yeah. but because it's not happening, or you still don't see how it's happening, you want to force it in a way. Well, it's a question of value, right? So we have a, we have a practice that assumes that the value of, a, of an event is recognizable in a human-to-human -human relation. Mm -hmm. Because nothing has ever happened that didn't alter the conditions. I mean, we know that to be the case. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I think a lot about is how to become okay with the discomfort of not knowing, mm -hmm. right? Or how to become okay with the kind of temporality or the kind of duration that doesn't leave an immediate mark. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, for example, what was really interesting was when I was following the, um, the taking your art for a walk, I immediately recognized that the gesture of the video was Marcelino's gesture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I knew that you were bringing a rhythm. That's the first thing I knew about you, that you were bringing a rhythm. Can, can the sense lab be a place that is truly interested in the emissary in the sense that the emissary doesn't bring us directly a kind of added value. Mm -hmm. They come, they, they leave something, they leave, they move, they, they, they shift. So like, what do I do in the surround, like let's say we could call it the mm. sense lab surround, mm. to feed my own practice? Yeah. So anyway, those are things that were on my mind. I don't know if they make sense to you, but... Yeah, mm. I mean, for me what was interesting is that something started to happen. There's something about introducing, like you, there's something that you may, and you don't even know how to say it, there's something you may learn from the sense lab, or there's something that the sense lab could do with you, like, I don't know, there's something there. So there's like a big intuition, but you don't know where it is. Like, um, so what is that? Yeah. What is that something? Um, and for some reason, for having very, very different rhythms, it started to be very important to to know it. I really want to to pronounce it. You know? So I, I woke up one day and I, I kind of wrote a, like a sketch, but it's a sketch for a conversation. <laughs> but the sketch allows these departing points for having a conversation that maybe would allow us to say, okay, where where is uh, where where are we crossing, or maybe we're not crossing, and that's okay. Well, but for me, the sense lab always has to ask. I mean, every day, every time the the the, the proposition comes into the world, be capable of addressing its pot potential depth. So it always has to be a question mm -hmm. rather than a certainty. Mm -hmm. In that question, it's clearer to me what it isn't than what it is. Yeah. For me, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done because I'm not easily social. 
So the requirement for a certain continual rethinking of what collectivity can mean, mm. it puts me in an uncomfortable place. And I'm constantly fascinated that I'm willing to return to that uncomfortable place. Mm -hmm. it, it has to hold the capacity for that discomfort in order to remain interesting to me. So I want at all costs to avoid an easy, happy, mm. everybody gets along, we all agree kind of environment. That's like, I'm allergic to that. I'm not interested in it. But life is allergic to that. Life is allergic <laughs> to that. <laughs> the sense that has to be oblivious to your presence. Mm -hmm. It actually has to not matter that much. You came once or never, or if you arrived yeah. and didn't arrive, or came and added something and left, or was at the reading group or not at the reading group, or it has to matter that the work is strong enough to ad attract a certain interest. Mm -hmm. So for me, the sense lab is maybe that opportunity, like the proposition in the world that there could be a place that didn't care that much about you, that you could connect to or not. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And in that not caring too much about you, things, be, in my experience, become possible. And then what kind of practice happens there? What I know is it's not a personal practice. I mean, I use this example a lot, but it's really one of the most vivid examples in my mind. It was called Into the Midst, so, and, um, and it was difficult, as usual. And uh, Marcelino came in and he found um, some, um, some coffee um, <laughs> filters. Right. So Marcelino comes up, three floors up, and he begins to um, throw the coffee filters mm -hmm. over the third floor. The whole event took off from that. I didn't know this guy. I wasn't even there when it happened. So I was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The pieces start to fall. Brian's photographing them. People are surrounding them. <laughs> Do you see mm -hmm. what I mean? So for me, that's... So nobody introduced Marcelino. I actually didn't know who he was. It took a while. Like, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. So anyway, for me, that sense that. Yeah, that, and that's what we were talking about. Like, how in the end of a conversation, there was this moment where... And that's what I'm interested in. When things are happening, mm -hmm. and when things just happen, and the problem that we were talking about, or at least from what I understood for her, was like... But then there's the telling about it, or, or where do you put the things that happened, or do you do something else with what happened, yeah. or do you just let, let it become this mm. thing that people talk about, which is something that happens a lot. Yeah. Mm. But So I'm generally not interested in those moments where there's a quality of, um, I don't know, where things have a tendency to go precious. But I tend to like events that happen because they need to happen. Mm 